crazy big bins haul. It's mostly women's stuff. That is what I'm targeting in on on whatnot. This is buyer two. Women's clothing, not, uh, I'm not as strong on women's clothing as men's clothing, but I am looking for women's contemporary clothing from brands that I do know and that fit a certain aesthetic that I'll probably talk about as I go along. That brand is not super familiar to me. A lot of this stuff you can uh, sell on eBay, certainly. BB or Beeb, I don't know how it's pronounced. It's not like a great brand, but this is a wool trench coat or not trench coat, pea coat. That's a wool pea coat, black wool pea coat. This is in season. This should go fairly well. This is a little bit late. This is a unisex graphic t-shirt from Disney. Disney stuff certainly does well and whatnot. It can do well on eBay too. It is always good, just generally universally and also specifically for Disney to run comps before you source something, certainly for the full ask of the retail thrifts. Hawaiian Tropic, I don't know if that's vintage or retro. I think it's actually vintage, but it's got cut out collar and sleeves that should do really quite well on whatnot i don't know how the sell-through is for something like that on ebay i think if you threw it up for like 15 bucks that should do just fine this was new with tags from nordstrom's rack or nordstrom rack rather double zero i'm not familiar with this brand but um new with tag stuff does well across all reselling platforms for clothing including whatnot and um you do kind of have to be careful if it's a really assy brand, if it's something, to, I don't know, like uh, Circo. I know that's like a, or Ciro or whatever. I don't know why that's the one that pops to mind. Probably because I'm tired. Just like nonsense brands that nobody wants. Being new with tags isn't necessarily going to carry it over the over the threshold. Monoprix Femme, that looks like an assy brand to me. A lot of the stuff I just grabbed and threw it in. 100% Lynn meaning linen, because this stuff is really cheap. And to be honest, I'm gonna make back what I spent on all of this on the ad revenue for this video. So this is all essentially free, virtually no risk except to my time and effort. Another Disney t-shirt. I have gotten really picky when it comes to graphic t-shirts. They don't uh, typically flip for all that much or as much as I would hope for on whatnot, or just period, unless it's something specific vintage t-shirts are the exception but they're also harder to find and also you have to be looking for the right kind of vintage t-shirt i have found this is from torrid this i hear does quite well on ebay everything that i find from torrid i typically give to my friend mick who goes sourcing with me he wasn't here today but i'm going back to the bins tomorrow with him so i've not sold a whole lot of torrid but it should do pretty okay. I'm going to try to separate these a little bit. This is Chico's Travelers, this heavy knit fabric that's called Slinky Fabric. And Chico's is not a phenomenal brand, definitely a mall brand. But the Chico's Travelers pieces are my favorite to sell, and I think they are worth the time. At least when I was still flipping a bunch of stuff or listing consistently on eBay, Chico's Travelers was a pretty consistent seller. This was just kind of a gamble. I don't know if this is going to sell. I don't actually know if this style is still popular. This is what's called a cold shoulder because it exposes your shoulder. Kind of a clever name. The brand is Allison Andrews. This looks and feels like it's not that strong of a brand or valuable of a brand. Just kind of basic, but I suppose we will see. These are going to get split up, I think, into uh, definitely women's tops and women's bottoms as separate streams, and also potentially women's tops and women's sweaters and jackets as two separate streams, trying to get as precise as possible. This was unbranded. I would not buy this to flip it on eBay or Poshmark or equivalent because it doesn't have a brand, but it is really like boxy and flowy and kind of boho, and this is the kind of thing that does track on whatnot. I can show this to the audience and somebody potentially will want that. It smells, it smells nice, but it does have a fragrance. Same story with this. This was not branded, but it's a knit sweater vest that's a boxy cut, and sweater vests, knit sweater vests, 
are really popular with younger people <clears throat> at the moment. It has a little stain. I would guess at least a third of this stuff is gonna wind up being discarded because of flaws. I don't like to sell stuff anywhere uh, that has like a lot of flaws, a lot of stains and holes, unless it's like a, a something like Icebreaker Merino, which it doesn't matter. But I, I do like to do quality control on my clothing. And that's just one of the hazards of sourcing at the bins is a lot of the stuff is there because it's messed up in the first place. This is a good brand. This has consistently been from okay to very good for me for the whole time I've been reselling. Soft Surroundings is uh, a women's brand that when I started reselling was like a total no-brainer. It was definitely one of the few women's brands that I would just pick up every time I found it and I had no problem flipping it. But the supply and demand metrics have kind of waxed and waned over the years. I believe it is back to being good. That is what I've heard from other YouTubers and I must believe them. This is not a very good brand. This is Mondetta. They do athleisure stuff that's lower end. But this is a pair of velour, really soft track pants or lounge pants, sweatpants. There's definitely like some bleed over between those keywords. And I just think that that definitely should flip for at least three bucks, which is my starting ask price on whatnot. Uh, I don't know that I would pick that one up to flip on eBay. This is a tank top from Life is Good, which is definitely on the lower end of kind of mid-tier bread and butter brands. Little camisole tank top or spaghetti strap tank. Love is all we need. I think that's a safe three to five buck flip. And it weighs so little, it was essentially free anyway. This is a great bolo brand, Vince. One of my favorite brands to find at the bins. It's one of the only like really good brands that I consistently find at the bins. It's, um, they do men's and women's. This is women's. It's a knit open front cardigan. It's in uh, what appeared to be at the time immaculate shape. I did check it over. Um, Vince, absolutely source it to flip it anywhere. <clears throat> this is a leather skirt. I have avoided skirts because they are sluggish sellers across all platforms for me. But this is really soft, genuine leather. The brand is New Frontier, which is not familiar to me, but it's really soft suede leather. And it has these metal rivets down here. I just couldn't pass it up for being as cheap as it is. This I just grabbed because I didn't want to bother to look it up on the phone. This is probably nothing. This is probably trash. Monte Azuli, Azabu Tokyo. It might be a designer brand. It might be an expensive designer brand. It doesn't look that way, and I'm already seeing little spots and stains and stuff, so that's probably a loss, but I'll look it up. Lauren Ralph Lauren is one of the assier lines of Ralph Lauren. This is a basic kind of drapey crossover. I'm not totally sure what the keyword is on that. I hope that's picking up. There's like two different panels that are crossed over in front. But it, you know, it looks nice. It feels nice. This is the kind of women's stuff that I look for. Uh, I'm always refining my sourcing and selling for women's because it is weaker for me than my men's clothing. But that kind of a really basic... Um, not a crazy color, not a crazy cut, something that's gonna to appeal to a lot of people. Uh, it, you can wear it in various circumstances. It has kind of a professional look to it. There's just this look and feel to women's clothing of a particular kind that attracts me to it uh, and that my instincts tell me is, is safe to flip on, on whatnot, um, just from experience. This is a great brand. This is a total windfall, Ben's Fine, Spanx. You can see S-P-A-N-X is one of the few women's clothing brands that I will pick up unconditionally, assuming that they're not all messed up, even if I find them priced up at Goodwills or whatever. Um, one of the easiest women's brands to flip for me. Same with this one. This is Lululemon. Um, there it is. 
which nobody got to because they weren't looking for this and they didn't have the feel. I have fairly educated fingers uh, after doing clothing reselling for a long time. And Lululemon, I think I must have said this probably 150 times on this channel, is one of the easiest, most conspicuous fabrics to uh, feel your way into <clears throat> out of all the brands. It just has this unique feeling. And when you develop that sense, it's a total boon when you source at the bins because a lot of people will pass up on it and miss it because it doesn't strike their fingers as something special. ATM, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. This is a semi-sheer, just basic tank top. I would typically avoid something like this, except I think it is designer Anthony Thomas Mat uh, Matitlo. Matillo? Matillo? I will have to look it up. Potentially nothing, potentially designer. This is a men's piece. I did pick up a few men's pieces. The bins are like 70% women's clothing. So uh, at least where I am. So you just default are sourcing women's stuff when you're there, unless you're trying not to. Territory Ahead is a fairly decent, solid bread and butter brand. I've always considered it on the lower end of the bread and butter spectrum for men's clothing. I wouldn't pay like retail prices for it. But I also haven't updated that Intel in quite a while, so it may be back to being good. This is Ann Taylor Loft, which is pretty assed out. It is the low end Ann Taylor stuff. Doesn't even say Ann Taylor on it. Ann Taylor, period, Ann Taylor is worth more money typically than Ann Taylor Loft. Um, but this is a linen top. Again, just basic monochrome, muted color, earth tone made with a nice fabric, will appeal to a lot of women, I think, and it's boxy cut, which is, to my understanding, what is still popular. A Taco Bell t-shirt. I may set a few of these aside for a specific t-shirt auction, maybe. We'll see what happens tomorrow, what kind of stuff I get, and what quantity. <clears throat> this is another t-shirt, graphic t-shirt, Nintendo 64 on an N64 tag. Nintendo tag. This is the kind of thing that I I will pick up. Vintage t-shirts or just, I don't even know how to nutshell it. There are just specific shirts that I know are gonna flip for more than three, four bucks. This one may not, this is Lucky Brand. I just have trained myself to not be able to pass up on Lucky Brand when I'm sourcing at the bins. The popularity comes and goes. I don't know how strong it is currently. Uh, it has consistently been one of my more solid bins brands in terms of the mall brands that you find all the time. Certainly better than like Hollister or Aeropostale or stuff like that. This, I think, is a women's top. WWG, I don't recognize. It's a t-shirt made with really nice fabric, like knit cotton fabric. Um, I'll have to look it up. Size F. This might, uh, the tag is in Japanese, so this might be some like private label brand from Amazon or something. I'm not sure. A vintage piece. Most of the stuff that I got is contemporary. I have learned not to to skew contemporary for whatnot over vintage in terms of everything except for t-shirts. It just sells a little bit better, but there are exceptions. Stuff like this I will definitely pick up. This size medium, 100% acrylic. A Milano, and it has these big buttons. It's a knit sweater. Again, it's in season. I got lucky today. Found a bunch of outerwear and sweaters. And I think that stuff is going to be in higher demand. I don't think that this is a good brand. Iris, Los Angeles. I'll look it up anyway. And it's this soft, unstructured blazer. Black blazer. Obviously, women's. Again, just, you know, basic kind of capsule wardrobe type stuff. This is the second half. Oh, no. No, it isn't. I have another Chico's Traveler's piece that goes with that other one. But this is just something similar. Ollie. Made in USA, this is vintage. It has big shoulder pads in it, but it's the same slinky knit fabric as the Chico's Travelers. I just have done quite well flipping this particular fabric, both on eBay and on whatnot. This should do pretty well on a whatnot stream. It's uh, not a great brand. It is Irie or Airy, which is very kind of mass market type stuff, but you know, cool dog riding a skateboard. Couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. My hope is that one of you cannot resist it either or somebody on whatnot. 
This is a basic Nike t-shirt. The reason I am excited about it is that it's on a vintage tag. The white Nike tags are what you really want. That, I don't know the eras. I know that the contemporary stuff is on black and I think, well, gray for sure. And I think maybe black tags, I don't really remember. But the white ones are highly desirable by Nike collectors and vintage people. So that is pretty cool. One of my favorite women's bins brands, that is Free People. Free People has various sublines. The most common one is We The Free. Uh, there's also Free People Beach stuff. This is a dress, a tank dress. It's got buttons on the side there. I'm sure there are keywords that apply to this. I don't know them. That is one of the advantages of selling women's clothing on whatnot that is a little bit easier than eBay is you don't have to necessarily know all the keywords which are mandatory for eBay. That feels like maybe a linen blend dress. Fairly safe money. I think it's slightly less popular than once it was, but I still managed to flip it pretty easily. True Religion. This is one of those pieces that weighs pretty much nothing, so it was essentially free. And, you know, you have to watch out with True Religion because it does get counterfeited a lot, but that looks real at first glance. This is not a good brand, as far as I know, cabbie, but I don't know. I kind of like the flowy, sheer, all over floral design. Very lightweight, very cheap. I think this is, yep, another Lululemon, another stealth lemon that was just sitting there, unclaimed. Got, must have been passed over by a dozen people before I got to it. And again, just the finger action, which is a gross phrase. This is a Hello Kitty Forever 21 pair of sweatpants. You'll notice it's almost entirely tops, not a whole lot of bottoms. And this needs to get lint rolled. Hello Kitty stuff, I think, is back. I had a couple of them go on a whatnot auction. I think that's happened a couple times where I was surprised by the, by how much it actually flipped for. You know, don't take my word for it. My memory is hazy on that front. This is a Vans t-shirt. Vans, it's kind of like Lucky Brand. I've just trained myself to pick up all the Vans that I find. And I don't know how well it actually sells anymore, but it's just instinctually I have to get it because I have done well with it in the past. And I think that's kind of a neat design. Someone should want that. And uh, that'll go maybe on a t-shirt auction. This is another vintage women's piece that I picked up, Don Kenny, brand I don't recognize. And I think it's a pajama top, but it's got this all over floral thing going on and the lacy collar. I think that will do well. I may take the vintage stuff, set it aside and bring it into a vintage shop to just try to flip it in person. This is another one. This is not a good brand. I see this tag quite a lot. Design Original Studio, but it's knit. It's a like short sleeve cardigan sweater knit in a, I think that that is a good aesthetic. I could be wrong, you tell me. I am not a buyer of women's clothing, except for when I source. This is a vintage men's shirt. This has kind of a fresh prints type of an aesthetic to it. This would be an easy flip to any of the vintage shops. They're always looking for stuff like this. And that, also I think I would buy that to flip it on eBay. I would probably price this at a certainly like probably no more than 25, including free ship because the brand's blazer for ends is not anything that I recognize, but you can just keyword your way into a sale with this vintage 90s, fresh prints, color block, striped, uh, Oxford, you know, you can, you can work the keyword magic. Another Disney t-shirt, basic Disney shirt. If you can get enough stuff that is Disney and that is not counterfeit, you got to watch it with certain kinds of Disney stuff and do a designated Disney stream on whatnot. You can make very good money. Lucky Brands. This is something that, again, if I were listing all of this on eBay, I would be excited to list this one. This is like a boho peasant top. That's what those are called as far as I know. 
And this kind of stuff has sold really consistently well for me. Another vintage, this is a scrub top, a Cherokee scrub top. Cherokee, not a great brand, but it's got this vintage, almost Garfield type all over cat thing. I would list this on eBay, certainly, and that should do quite well uh, on whatnot too. And this, this is also a vintage piece. Note the weird baggy cut, short sleeves, the brand is nothing, but it is 50% lamb's wool also. So assuming that doesn't have any holes or stains, that will go on a stream or to the vintage shops. Is this also Lulu? No, this is Prana. I love Prana. I love uh, especially Prana pants, like shorts and pants. But these uh, kind of things also are great. That's the logo right there. Not as strong as Lululemon, but consistently really good seller on eBay in every category for me except men's button-down shirts, which I would still pick up if I found them for dirt cheap, but maybe not for full price. Wrangler, this is a men's piece. It's a Pearl Snap all black Western shirt. I um, am pretty trepidatious when it comes to selling Wrangler generally contemporary Wrangler unless it's new with tags or something like a trucker jacket, denim jacket, I would just avoid it. But the vintage extra long tails cowboy pearl snap shirts can do pretty well. Although you do have to be careful with your buy price because they tend to be overabundant on the market. Um, if you find them in crazy patterns, Aztec, Southwestern, the geometric stuff, uh, or like cowboy scenes, those are what you really want. The all black one should flip, uh, would flip pretty quickly, I think, on eBay. This might be nothing at all. I don't know. I uh, just kind of went out on a limb with this one. The brand is mine. It looks and feels like it's not that nice. I mean, just not that expensive. You know, it feels nice enough. I think this is like polyester fabric. Yep, 100% polyester. Yet another vintage shirt, women's vintage shirt, like floral Hawaiian button-up shirt, short sleeve. Brand is Blair. Blair is not a strong brand. You find a lot of vintage stuff from Blair. It would take something like that to provoke me to want to buy it, to flip it. I guess I did get some vintage stuff. This is a vintage Calgary, Canada color-blocked, I think youth sweater, and I've already seen a stain on it, but that's okay. It doesn't matter quite as much. And it's on some tag with the maple leaf on it. I have a feeling I'm just gonna take this vintage stuff in to flip it in person, assuming that they're currently buying. There's only one vintage store locally that I can, that I will bother to still try to flip to for various reasons. It's another Talbot's piece. Talbots, I don't know if I was talking about, well, Talbots and Torrid, I always kind of get mixed up. Torrid, I think, has slightly stronger demand, or at least it has in the past, but Talbots. Mick says is a, an easy flip. eBay and Poshmark, he sells more of it than I do. This, again, I always just give to him to flip because it's one of his favorites. This is uh, another boxy, maybe a crop t-shirt and it's new with tags it's got the fabric tag uh facu <laughs> fabulous sorry it was like thin lettering i thought it said f-a-k-u less fabulous living in la simply made in usa could be something i don't know i'll look it up if not you know th all of this like I said, is basically all value added. Because I got it for so cheap, There, it's essentially no financial risk to me. If all of this stuff sells for three bucks each, or if half of it doesn't sell, I will have really only lost time, which isn't, you know, nothing. But I'm not going to freak out if this stuff doesn't skyrocket in price during the auctions. Be the change you want to see in the world. That one could go for three, or that could be something that I could see going for eight or nine bucks. 
another brand that's unfamiliar to me, Crescent. There are so, 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 so many women's brands. It's almost impossible to keep track of them. Or at least it feels that way. Size small, these are linen, mustard yellow, kind of wide leg, crop leg pants. This looks like something that should, ah, uh, it's got the big dangly messed up button. All right, never mind. that's the first discard. There will be many, many, many more, I'm sure. Another t-shirt has a cool hedgehog on it. I guess that is how I flip or source t-shirts, especially at the bins, is if I find it irresistible for some reason, I will grab it. Cool hedgehog having a little tea party. I couldn't say no. I'm sure some of you are excited as well. Talbots, another Talbots piece. This is an athletic skirt. I think athletic skirts do sell a little better than uh, just skirt skirts. I don't know, that's what my instincts tell me. That is the liner. Also could call it a tennis skirt. Pair of pants. Free people, free people corduroy pants. These would be a great flip on eBay. This brand is not very good. As far as I know, Jack by BB Dakota. I think that's very, uh, very much an ass brand. Size small, I picked it up because it just I don't know, aesthetically, it looks and feels really nice. It has this interesting knit fabric and this, you know, it is polyester, but this kind of fleece lining thing going on. It's uh, in season. It looks, you know, nice. Another Vans shirt. I think this is the first one that I picked up. Just, you know, eye-catching color. I'll see if these are actually all in the same size and I'll lot them up if that's the case. Aha, ha, ha, that one I will save for last. I had a just insane find right at the end. Gecko Hawaii is a vintage brand that I love to sell because this is what I wore when I was six years old. I don't know. Uh, I guess they are still making clothing because that's not a vintage tag. But I could, again, not resist this whatsoever. I don't actually know how str strong the sell-through numbers on it are. I would guess the vintage stuff probably is worth quite a bit. Sam Smith. This is one of those people that I just am too 35 years old to be that familiar with. It's a tour shirt. I'll look it up. Another band shirt, The Casualties, is a punk band. This is uh, cut off, like a DIY kind of crop top. Definitely uh, women's, I think. That's how it should be marketed. <clears throat> that would do great on eBay. Knox Rose is a Target brand. I've heard a uh, few people say that the resale value is pretty good. I've only found it, I think, a couple times at the bins while I've been a whatnot seller. I don't remember what it sold for, but I've heard Kaylee Elaine talk about Knox Rose before. She's a women's clothing reseller. It's very good, worth watching if you're not subscribed to her. Um, this is, I, I only looked up like two brands when I was sourcing. This is one of them. Uh, oil Lily, women's wear, and the sell-through was like 50% sell-through on eBay, and some of the prices were pretty good. And it's kind of a crazy looking top. I don't know how popular that's gonna be. Um, but there are many things in this life that I don't know. I grabbed this because it feels expensive. It has this almost St. John type knit, like heavy knit fabric, Maggie, that looks like it might be an expensive tag. I'm sorry, McGinn, M-C-G-I-N-N, -N, size small, made in Korea. I mean, ah, it's so hard to tell because a lot of these brands are great at mimicking the look and feel of expensive clothing. Rolling Stones tank top, basic Rolling Stones branded tank top. I don't know, yeah, that's like a DIY cutout thing. Again, a lot of these cutout sleeve and collar shirts do wind up at the bins because that is construed as a flaw, which I guess technically it is, but that does not certainly prohibit sales, especially not for something like that. Here's a second, <clears throat> excuse me, second one of these double zero pieces that's new with tags. That's more of a shirt dress. Almost feels like a viscose fabric. A pair of interesting vintage pants. Again, feels like St. John's. The brand is Nina Leonard. 
I'm guessing that is nothing. But it just feels nice. You know, it has the, those runners on the sides. It sells for three bucks, so well. This is men's, and what is the brand? I don't remember. Oh, it is Redhead. Redhead is the in-house brand for Cabela's, and Cabela's stuff <clears throat> and Bass Pro Shop stuff does typically have strong resale value relative to what it is and how cheaply made it is. The sell-throughs, uh, every time I've checked them, I haven't checked them in a while, they've consistently been pretty good. They've never been stellar. They've always been fairly good. So if you can source stuff like this, especially stuff like cargo pants or jackets, you can get it for really cheap, then uh, that stuff can do really well on eBay. It's a great one to lot up also. American Eagle. I, uh, I have a mixed track record with American Eagle. It's not quite as strong. Well, I don't know. The American Eagle jeans have consistently been pretty good. And this is a pair of joggers. Those are joggers, jogger pants, not jeans. And I don't think these are cargos either. No, just basic joggers. I'll have to look it up, try to figure out if it's, well, let's check the pockets. No, those are men's, a pair of men's joggers. Those might be in my size actually, but I think I am again, two 35 years old to be wearing jogger pants. This is the first thing that I grabbed. This is the first thing that I uh, found today and it set a good tone. This is a vintage down puffer jacket from a brand called Brambilla. Brambilla. No, that's Italian. Brambilla France. This, um, I am, I've never heard of the brand. Just by merit of the fact that it is down filled um, means that it is probably valuable and aesthetically it is cool. Every time I've updated the Benzwear Manifesto, and I guess since I brought it up, I'll talk about the manifesto at the end of the video, my plans for it. Uh, every time I have researched what the most expensive sales for men's clothing brands, every men's clothing brand is, it is always down puffers. That is consistently number one. Maybe leather jackets, um, or for streetwear brands, particular like rare hoodies and stuff. But down puffers are not, uh, it's kind of like all rectangles are squares, not all squares are rectangles. Not all down puffers are worth top dollar, but a lot of top dollar items are down puffers. I don't know, I think you get the point. So that could be worth 20 bucks, it could be worth 100. I'm not totally sure, I'll look it up on eBay. That would be a great thing to sell on eBay, just with keywords also. It's, you know, the time of the year. Even if there's no track record of sales on eBay, I would still bother to list that one. And this one is a slightly dingier down jacket. I would potentially list that as a puffer, but I would be getting away with something because it doesn't have the quilted lines. Although I guess this one doesn't either. Yeah, I would still call both of these puffers just because they're puffy, but a proper puffer has those quilted stitch lines horizontally on it. But the down puffer, you know, you don't want to mislead people with your marketing, but it's such a strong search key phrase that I would just do it. Members only is a very so-so brand. But it's vintage members only. It does have a bunch of sweat staining on it, but it is also downfill. It's got some discolorations on it. Size 40. And we will end with an insane item. I have sold two that are like this, but were not as cool as this one on the real reel for I think 200 bucks each, and I pocketed whatever the commission was. It's a silk, I think it's silk, feels like silk. Even if it isn't, doesn't matter. Robe, evening robe. From Christian Dior, vintage Christian Dior. Not all Christian Dior stuff is worth money. Not even all the vintage Christian Dior stuff is worth money, but something like this, a vintage all over print paisley Christian Dior robe. Let's see if it's actually silk. This is, uh, I would say, safely worth 200 bucks. I would have to look at the comps on eBay. 
But I would probably start it around there and see what happened. And I may actually do that. I may send this into real real. I may actually take the time to list this on eBay because I don't um, I'm happy to get below market prices in bulk on whatnot for the stuff that I sell, but something like this, I do want to squeeze as much value as possible out of it because it's a rare opportunity. So I might as well. Um, so that absolutely paid for everything already. I mean, if I sell like a handful of things, it'll pay for itself, but that's an outrageous find. So, uh, let me talk about why I'm, why, I don't know, I've talked a lot about whatnot, but I've said a few times, like, if I were to list it on eBay, I just, selling on whatnot is so much physically easier for me and so much easier on a number of fronts that I, that's just where my focus is. Listing on eBay is very physically painful for me, doing that kind of computer work and doing something about taking the photos, very physically painful. That's one of the reasons I'm so motivated to do whatnot, also because it's working really well for me, or at least it has been. Um, the the manifesto same deal it is excruciatingly painful for me to sit at the computer after a while at least and doing do the the hunting and researching and typing and working at the computer for hours on end and i probably will sit down and just make myself do it because it's important to people and also because it makes me a lot of money to be frank um but i have to figure out essentially a time in my life where I can just be in pain for two straight weeks. So coming eventually. All right. Um, I have to process all this stuff. I don't know when I'm going to be holding the whatnot auction specifically, but um, you will be sure to be informed. All right. Thank you so much.